rigs have come on so far since when I started carp fishing in the 60s, then there was a general belief that um, you couldn't have any resistance in a setup, otherwise that would scare the carp. So uh, we used to fish what was called free line, uh, no tackle on the line, the main line at all, just a hook and the bait, and the bait was your weight to cast. And then um, as we progressed, wanting to cast further, uh, lighter baits come out. We needed lead on our line, so then we went uh, running leads directly on the line. Uh, again, uh, trying to make sure there's no friction at all. And from that, it progressed to understanding that um, if you gave them some resistance with the uh, weight, you know, the bolt rigs, um, your catches would really go up. And that really is how it progressed through. And then the big one being the hair rig. So bolt rigs and then the hair rig, that's what was a game changer for carp fishing and uh, started what is now the modern world of carp fishing and the vast array of terminal tackle that's available out there now. Like I said in the beginning, all we needed was a main line and a hook. Now look at how much stuff's on the walls. I always had a fascination for all elements of carp fishing and you know, a desire to achieve and be top of my game. So it goes without saying uh, the, the hook end of the uh, uh, game was very important to me. Um, I was lucky that I had a good friend in Rod Hutchison. Uh, you know, so he was doing lots of experimenting with particles and all that. And um, with the particles, um, he had to uh, leave the hook sticking out. And it was kind of him, I think, who first, well, first pointed out to me um, a heavier lead fixed on the line uh, was getting him more takes when he was particle fishing. Uh, he was using barrel leads at the time, and they didn't work for me. All I kept doing was getting a lot of twitches. And it wasn't until later I realised that you know, because of the length of them, there wasn't enough mass of lead to prick the carp on the bare hook setups. I think it worked for him because he was fishing silty lates. He was on Redmar. So it just shows you know, that example of how far night you've got to be with your, with your thinking with terminal tackle. You know, in other words, you could have a rig that will work on one water and it won't work on another water purely because of the makeup of the bottom. You know, understanding all elements of the rigs, how they work and where they work, and then, and then looking at your situation is just so important. So from the, you know, the barrel leads firstly, uh, we then realised you, know, you needed a mass of lead, you know, like a dumpy lead or a casting thick lead, uh, fixed directly on the uh, line. Um, I was using a little uh, piece of tube with a um, cocktail stick in it as a stopper, but that wasn't that satisfactory to slide up the line. A lot of anglers were just um, using link clips to clip the lead onto the swivel uh, quickly, uh, uh, we realised that that was a, a death rig. And so you know, everyone was looking for you know, solutions to make a safe bolt rig. And so one of the first things I, I come up with was um, what we called a bolt bead. Um, it, was a, it was a bead, it was like T-shaped. It had a lug on one end, then a piece coming down the middle with a hole in it to fix the lead for a link clip, and then another lug on the other. So the lug on the left, you put a little bit of tube over that and slip that over the swivel. Uh, so if fish got uh, tethered, it'd just pull the lead off and slide up the line. The lug on the right was if you was going to use anti-tangle tube. Uh, so you slid the anti-tangle tube up there and it worked on the principle that if your line was cut, if a fish was snagged and your line cut, the lead would just uh, slide up the line and fall off. First major advancement in fish safety, I think. Essentially what I developed there was um, an early version of the, what's now referred to as a lead clip and mass product, we're very proud of it. And how that came about, um, I was fishing a famous lake called Harefield, uh, which had a lot of um, really sh uh, sharp gravel bars in there, bars covered in flints. And um, one day I hooked a carp and I was playing it, and uh, behind the lead, um, I caught up a, a, a tree branch, so I'm playing this carp, this tree, uh, and this tree branch all tangled up, and the line cut above the tree branch, and I was 
horrified, massively distressed that you know, now I'd left a carp in the lake uh, with a rig in it and a tree uh, attached to it as well. Fortunately, uh, the carp um, snagged itself uh, on the in a uh, bar near the bank and we eventually managed to get it off but it was a horrible moment and then I realised the, uh, the fault of um, you know, the setups we were using you know, like my bolt bead where they all relied on the line being cut uh, so the uh, rig, the, the main line, the hook link could pull through the setup that um, attached the lead and free the carp from it so I just thought I need a system where I can discharge the lead uh, so then I went on to what I called the, uh, the casting clip, where um, I took a, a helicopter setup ending in a, uh, a link clip, and I cut the clip back so it just had a hook. Then I tied a piece of fine three pound line to the hook, and the other end to the lead, and they just hooked it over the clip. The theory being that when I cast out, as soon as it hit the surface, uh, the lead would uh, bounce off and when you got a take the three pound line would break. It was incredibly successful and it changed everything at Harefield. You know a top angler was catching say five fish and he might lose 30 a season because of the bars. Uh, my friend the next year went on to catch 30, 40 fish all because of um, that invention. So that then brought me on to thinking you know I need to develop um, a bead that will discharge the lead, you know, as well as give all the elements of the, uh, my original bulk bead. And thus the safety lead clip was born. And I think there's probably not a carpenter in the world or Europe that hasn't used it at some time. You could argue, as it occurs to me, that's probably the most successful item of tackle ever developed. As I'm speaking and thinking back, you know, like I said, it started with just main line of the hook you know, and how much terminal tackle is on the walls now. It's quite stunning how it's been developed uh, from the NAS perspective. You know, I've always sought to uh, innovate uh, items of terminal tackle that help the angler uh, improve safety in carp fishing. Uh, always with performance in mind. Strength is very key to me. There's no point in hooking a carp if you lose it because your terminal tackle lets you down. And I'm very proud of the Nash range of terminal tackle we have today. Covers all the boxes and every fishing situation I think you'd ever come across.